the story of Beauty and the Beast. asked her over and over again to forgive him for what he was about to do. Uh, I only hadn't been so foolish. It all happened three days before. Beauty's father was on his way home when a blizzard forced him to seek refuge in a deep, dark forest. Fortunately, just when he thought he could go no further, he happened upon a very large and isolated mansion. This was no ordinary mansion. On the outside, it was the dead of winter, but inside it was springtime, and the garden was filled with magnificent multicolored roses. The father had never seen such beautiful flowers, and he could not resist plucking one. This rose will make a lovely present for my youngest daughter, Beauty. Ah. Seemingly from out of nowhere, the owner of the mansion appeared. A hideous and frightening beast. How dare you insult my hospitality by stealing one of my roses? I gave you shelter from the storm and this is the thanks I receive? You must bring one of your daughters here to take your place. Oh, beauty. I should have let the beast slay me rather than promise him this. It was my fault and I should pay the price. No, father. It was my fault for asking you to bring me a rose. You must return to take care of our family. Don't worry about me. I'll be all right. And with that, beauty ran off to take her father's place before the horrible beast. They were sure that they would never see each other again. Beauty, please forgive me. Farewell, my father. Farewell. When Beauty awoke, she found herself in the most beautiful and enchanting room that she had ever seen. She thought that she must surely be dreaming and rushed to the window, hoping to discover where she really was. Beauty. You will never know how grateful I am that you have come here to share my loneliness. I have waited a long time. How do you do, sir? I have come to ask your forgiveness for my father. He meant no insult when he picked your beautiful rose. You see, he did it only for me. You play beautifully, sir. Thank you, beauty. However, your loveliness far surpasses any music I have ever heard. Oh. Oh. Return to your room. Sad day was the beginning of their life together. You need only ask, and I will give you anything your heart desires. The beast thought this would make her happy, but Beauty's thoughts were only of the father she might never see again. When the beast saw the tears in her eyes, he too was greatly saddened. Beauty and the Beast saw each other only for a short time each day, during the evening when they dined together. As they dined, the Beast lit only one candle at Beauty's end of the table, and he himself ate in darkness so that she would not have to see his horrible face. 
But then, one day, the beast said in a hesitant voice, Beauty, I want you to be my wife. Beauty was greatly saddened. If I refuse, you will kill my father, won't you? The beast's great heart was broken, but he would not give up and ask Beauty to marry him every evening for the next two months. But then, one day... bandaged the beast's arm. But when she was finished, she was greatly confused. This time, to her, the beast's arm no longer seemed ugly or horrible. But during this time, Beauty's father they became very sick and he called out for her. Oh, Beauty, if I could just see you one more time. Beauty. The beast had a magic mirror, and he saw the sadness in Beauty's father's eyes. What? My father is sick? Beauty, I am sure that if he sees your smiling face, he will surely recover. What? Why, does that mean that you will let me return to him? Yes, but you must promise to return to me before the week is over. I promise. Oh, yes, I promise. Yes. All right, you must be off, for your father needs you now very much. But you have given me your promise, and I need you even more than he. If you do not return, I know that I shall surely die. Father! Beauty! Remember your promise, Beauty! Beauty! Oh, Father! It was just as the beast had said. As soon as her father saw Beauty's smiling face, he quickly recovered. Her father was so happy that he invited all of their friends and neighbors to a great party to welcome Beauty home. Beauty danced and danced, and the time flew by ever so quickly. In no time at all, the week was ending. Beauty, you promised. Why don't you return? Beauty, my heart is breaking. You must come back. Ah, my father. It is time for me to return to the forest. Beauty, you can't leave us again. There's no reason for you to return to that frightening place. But father, if I don't return as I promised, he will surely die. Farewell. Don't go. No, don't go. Come back, Beauty. Please, come back. As Beauty spurred her horse through the driving rain, she did not understand what had happened to her. How could she leave her father and family to return to such a horrible creature? It could only be because she had fallen in love. Yes, that was it. The beast's kindness had won the beauty's heart. I'm back. I've returned. Where are you? Oh! Please, it's me. I came back just as I promised. Don't die, please. I came back because I love you. Don't you see that? I love you. I love you. Don't die, please. I've come back. <laughs> And then a very wonderful thing happened. You see, 
that ugly beast was really a handsome prince. A spell had been cast over him by a wicked magician, and he had been doomed to appear as a beast until he could find someone to love him in spite of his ugliness. Beauty, you have saved my life. The prince had found true love, and he and Beauty returned to his castle to be married very happily ever after. Don Quixote, the classic story of old Spain. Many, many years ago, in 16th century Spain, in an area known as La Mancha, there lay a quiet little village. And in the village, there was a large estate that belonged to a middle-aged gentleman named Alonzo Quijano. Instead of taking care of his estate, like most other gentlemen of the time, Alonzo Quijano preferred to read books about chivalry, about knights in shining armor. And the more he read, the more he envied the knights of old. They led such exciting lives. He imagined that he was a brave knight on a fast steed riding through the land, protecting maidens in distress and slaying dragons and monsters. Sancho! Yes, sir. May I help you? Sancho, I will become a brave knight and you my squire. We will ride through the land and uphold justice for all. He was very serious. He changed his name to Don Quixote and wore his great grandfather's armor. He then mounted a common plow horse and named it Rosinante. And along with his faithful squire, he was ready for his first adventure as a knight. The next morning, as the sun was shining brightly over the farmlands of the village, there suddenly appeared a knight in shining armor and a squire riding through the countryside. Everyone stopped their work to have a look at this strange sight. They just couldn't believe their eyes. Sancho, there is much to do. We must push on. The work of a brave knight is never done. Don Quixote and Sancho had reached the end of their first day without incident. But Don Quixote dreamed of the adventures to come as they rode into the night. The people of the village thought that Don Quixote's behavior was very peculiar. Don Quixote and Sancho continued their ride through the countryside, when suddenly... Huh? Oh! What a lovely girl! Beautiful maiden, let me introduce myself. I am Don Quixote. Hello, I'm Aldanza. Why are you dressed so strangely? Strangely? Huh? Uh, 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 uh. Why, I am the brave knight of La Mancha. Oh, so you're the man I've been hearing about. Is there some kind of unrest in the land that has caused you to become a knight? Unrest? Why, there is much injustice. Yes. Aldanza gave him a rose. He realized that he was quite harmless. Our brave knight is a real gentleman. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Our heroes were soon on their way. Don Quixote was overjoyed at finding a beautiful maiden to protect. As they said farewell, he decided to rename her Dulcinea. The next morning, Don Quixote and Sancho were sleeping soundly beneath a large tree, when suddenly... Huh? Ah, an enemy army approaching. Come, Sancho! Huh? Master, master, please! As 
the dust cleared, Don Quixote and Sancho could see two groups of animals galloping to the center of the field. The enemy attack! Don Quixote charged. But wait, they're only sheep. Not for Don Quixote. He imagined an enemy army, and he went into action. Where are you? Show yourselves! Come out and fight like men, you sniveling cowards! Come on! Huh? I'll run you through, you evildoers! All of you! Let's go! Come on! Quixote has fallen from his horse. Is he all right? Huh? Come on, keep coming. I'll take you all on, you scoundrels. Don't run. Aha, take that. Let's go. I'll take you. Come on. There was a terrible storm that night, but our brave hero and his loyal servant pushed onward. Or at least they tried to. The winds were blowing so hard that every time they moved forward, they were blown back. They had a hard time getting anywhere. They struggled and struggled to fight the wind. It was a difficult battle. Finally, Sancho had to push his master's horse to get them moving forward. Don Quixote was determined to find adventure, and Sancho faithfully helped him in any way he could they came upon some windmills that were spinning rapidly in the winds of the storm. Don Quixote and Sancho continued to struggle against the elements. The windmills, illuminated by the lightning, looked mysterious. And with Don Quixote's imagination, these huge spinning mechanical structures could appear to be almost anything. Sancho, my lance! Sancho couldn't understand why Don Quixote wanted his lance, but being the faithful companion that he was, he brought his master the weapon. He looked at his master and then for the enemy. But he saw no one, just the windmill standing tall against the flashing lightning and crackling thunder. But the grimly determined Don Quixote Focusing on the pinwheel-like effect of the nearest windmill, used his great imagination to slowly turn it into a frightening vision. The vision grew and grew, until it was clearly a giant monster standing directly in his path. Don Quixote studied the enemy. And as he looked closely at the monster, it raised its hand, and in it he saw... Dulcinea! Quixote bravely charged the windmill. But to him, that windmill was the giant monster who had captured his love, Dulcinea. Unhand her! Help! I'm coming! Fear not! Oh, please! Evil creature, you shall feel my lance! Don Quixote. He had speared the sail of the windmill, and it had hurled him into the air. And so our brave knight had come to the end of another imaginary adventure. The next day, the sails of the windmills turned peacefully from a cool, steady breeze. The sky was clear, and the air was fresh and clean from the fallen rain. It was a fine day, but not for our friend. Our brave knight had suffered his first defeat, and loyal Sancho led his injured master home to nurse his wound. Don Quixote believed that some kind of evil magic had turned that giant into a windmill. Oh! Don Quixote was weary. What happened? Huh? Oh, 
My Dulcinea. I'm so glad you're safe. I would fight all the giants in the land for you. Oh, Don Quixote, you'll never see the world as others do. When the townspeople laughed, Don Quixote was unconcerned. He returned to his home with Sancho and with the lovely Dulcinea by his side. He enjoyed reading to her and the local children from his book of chivalry. Hmm. But what's this? And There's so something the wrong. Knights. Don Quixote seems shocked at what he's reading. What could be upsetting him so? Sancho! Huh? Bring my armor and prepare my mount. There is too much injustice in the land for us to rest. Onward we'll march, fighting for justice uh... forever! <sighs> and so, once again, our brave knight donned his armor and along with his faithful squire, was ready for battle. They galloped away, determined to right the wrongs of the land. Don Quixote would not let anything stop him from fulfilling his dream of becoming a brave knight. The lesson to be learned from the unusual behavior of our brave knight is one of perseverance. And that simply means when you really want to do something very badly, never ever give up, no matter how difficult things may seem. Because if you truly believe in your dream, you can make it come true. One of the oldest and best-known stories of all time is Noah's Ark, and it comes to us from the Bible. Long, long ago, there was a time in human history when virtually all of the peoples of the world were either at war, quarreling with each other, or breaking the rules of God in other ways. Law and order had broken down to the point where God became disappointed he had created man in the first place. One man remained obedient to God's wishes. His name was Noah. going to be devastated. Who in the world put that nonsense in your head? God is angry because you have forsaken him. Forsaken him? <laughs> forsaken him, he says. <laughs> Please listen to me. Please heed my words. There may still be time. In your hearts, you must strive never to tell lies, to steal or quarrel with each other, to do those things which make God angry. You must listen to the word of God. No more lies? No more thievery? Stop our fighting? <laughs> Get out of here, old man. Enough of this foolishness. Who do you think you are coming in here like that? That's right. Go on. Get out of here. <laughs> Please, you must believe me. You must. Noah led his family from village to village, warning the people of God's anger and pleading with them to mend their ways. But alas, they only laughed at him. Noah tried his best, but his words of warning were soon forgotten by the idolatrous villagers. And then, one day, going on here? Hey, what's that? What is it? It was an ark, a giant ship built by Noah and his family. Noah had been ordered by God to build the ark as a refuge for his family and all of the animals of the world. What kind of fool would build an ark around here? 
Oh, there's no water for miles. Oh, it's just the old fool Noah. <laughs> what a joke. Wait. Quiet for a second. Did you hear that? That, that sound. Sounds like some kind of music to me. Hey, you see what I see? Elephants! <laughs> Answering God's call, a pair of every animal species in the world was parading to Noah's Ark. Coming up. It, it's coming up fast. We'd better hurry and seal the door. Just a minute. I have the feeling we've forgotten something. Oh, <laughs> well, there's always room for two more. <laughs> All right, secure the door. was the worst storm the world had ever seen. God rained down lightning and thunder for 40 days and 40 nights. And when the rains finally subsided, the entire world was covered with water. For the next 150 days, Noah and his companions were alone on the sea. Finally, the waters began to recede. It was then that Noah released the two crows to look for land. But dry land was nowhere to be found. The ark was down to its last supplies of food. I'm sorry, but this is all we have for today. 
The next morning, the rooster was even too hungry to crow. Things were looking very bad. Noah decided once more to look for land, and this time released the two doves into the sky. But all they could find was one barren patch of mountaintop. Certainly no place for Noah's band to begin a new life. Seven days later, they were completely out of food. Noah once again released the doves and prayed that they would find a place to land. Noah and his family then began the long vigil, waiting for the doves' return. Look! They're returning! The doves were returning, and in their beaks they carried olive branches, proof that they had found fertile land, safe to begin their new lives. Noah had placed his faith in God, and his prayers were answered. We've all been saved! Mm. Everyone, look! It's the sun! We must give thanks for this second chance to create a new world where all men can live in peace as brothers. For myself, I will keep my pledge to do my best never to anger God again. We must never have to face such hardship and sadness as we have just been through. And so saying, Noah released the animals onto the land so that they might begin their new lives. It was a joyous time for Noah and his family as they bravely began anew a civilization that continues to the present. For we are all descendants of that wise and holy man. <laughs>